That means He took your sin, He took your sickness, He took your poverty, He took your curse, He took everything that was yours. He said, sub. You know, it's like when you play basketball and the guy playing in the court gets tired or injured. You know, you don't just say, how are you? Oh, I broke my leg. Oh, okay, that's good. Keep on playing. See, you don't do that. You substitute. He gets out, somebody takes his place. And that's what Jesus did. He said, let me take your place. Because you cannot justify yourself. There's no way you can appease and atone for the sin that you uh, committed. He said, let me take your place. Let me take on the curse. Let me take on the punishment. The Bible says the chastisement for our peace was laid on him. He took our place. When, God, when Jesus came, that's why the Bible says that we don't have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. He knows. He knows that even though He took your place and that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, He knows that you still have weaknesses. He knows that you still have flesh and you still battle with sin. Even though sin has no dominion over you, we still battle, we still fight, and we still must master sin as it were and even that by God's grace but he knows that so he's not harsh on us why he himself was tempted in all points as we are he knows what it's like to be tempted now think about this God cannot be tempted James says God cannot be tempted and yet Christ when he took on flesh took on the very weakness of man, which is the ability to be tempted. The weakness, facing the weakness of temptation. His temptation was not a farce. You know, like he went through the motion of being tempted, when in fact, he could not be tempted. No, he could have been. He could have sinned. And you know, that's that's a debate that theologians still argue on. You know, and debate about. Could Jesus have sinned? You know, and it's a very important question. Well, the truth of the matter is he did not sin. But if he couldn't have sinned, then the whole thing was a mockery. And he made fun of us, adding insult to injury. But he, it was a substitute. He completely identified with our weakness so that we can now therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. See, when the Bible says, where is that? Anyway, it, what, what, what this is trying to say is He became like us in every way. Okay? He became like us. And the, word bo- and the reason for that is so that now He becomes experientially aware of our weaknesses so that, look at this, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. The word boldly, when you look at the Greek of that, it means without hesitation or concealment. In other words, you can walk in completely transparent. You know why? Because we're naked before God anyway. He sees right through us. You know, when, if ever you sin, you can't hide that. Adam thought he could. See, Adam thought he could hide it. But even before Adam said anything, God started looking for him. Adam, where are you? See, uh, Adam was the one that ran away. That's the thing about sin. It makes us run away. Sin does not make us seek God. Sin makes us run away from God. But that's why God reminds us that we are the righteous, that we are His righteousness, so that even in our time of need, like the time when we sin, we will still enter into His throne room of grace boldly. In other words, without hesitation. It's almost like, in Tagalog, there's a term for it, kapal muka. See? That's what boldly means. Now, you just sinned, but you'll enter boldly. Papa, I blew it again. I'm sorry. See, there's no, there's no hesitation. It doesn't mean that go ahead and sin. Anyway, he'll always accept you. No, that's not, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I am trying to say is that 
God understands us and loves us so much that even when we blow it, He says, hey, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just come on over. Just come into my presence. Why? Because that's where we find mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. See, what he's saying is, look, what you need, I have here. Don't run away. In fact, run this way. Not run away. Run this way. Because I have what you need. Amen? Now, I find this interesting. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Grace has a throne. You know why? Because grace is a person. And his name is Jesus. Amen? Grace, grace is not a doctrine. Or grace is not just a doctrine. It, grace goes beyond the doctrine. Grace is a person. Grace is God. Grace died for us. And grace exalted us. Grace called us and said, Come to me all of you who are weary and heavy laden. Grace is more than just another lesson in the Bible. Grace is a person, and grace is personal. Amen? And the thing I find, amen, the thing I find about this is this, that when we enter into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace. We obtain mercy and find grace. We obtain mercy and find grace. Grace and mercy are not the same. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. That's mercy. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. Grace is when you get what you don't deserve. See, so there's a difference there. And this is what happens. You just sinned. You walk into the throne room of God. You don't deserve His presence. But mercy says, I'm going to give you His presence. What we deserve is punishment. But that's not what He's going to give. You know why? Because He already punished Christ on your behalf. That's why God is no longer mad at you. Amen? Amen? He's no longer mad at you. Even when you sin. Let me put it this way. Not only will God not get mad at you, God cannot get mad at you. He can't. Otherwise, He mocks what Christ did on the cross. All His anger, He poured out on Jesus on the cross. There is no anger left. And if He gets mad at you, he nullifies what Christ did on the cross. And you know what? He's not going to do that. The reason why He doesn't get mad at you is because of His great love for His Son. It's not because we deserve it, but because His Son deserves it. He's the one that was the sacrifice. He's the one that made us acceptable to God. Amen? And this is the thing. When you come in, in your time of need, you come in, not only do you not get what you deserve, and not only do you get what you don't deserve, you will get in super abundance that which you do not deserve. You know, I was meditating on this last night again, and he says, do you know that when I give, I don't give the way you give? When I give, I don't count. When I don't give, I don't make an accounting. When I give, I don't keep a list. When I, don't, when I give, I don't give in fear that I might run out. So when you ask for something, I give you some things. When you ask for one, I'll give you 1,000. When you ask for 10, I'll give you 1 million. When you ask for a hundred, I'll give you a hundred million. Because I don't give the way man gives. When we had a problem, and that problem was called sin, it needed to be paid for. God decided to pay 